Do DNA repair enzymes and skincare products actually do anything? We're gonna be getting into that in this video and I'm also gonna be reviewing for you all two sunscreens that allegedly contain DNA repair enzymes from ISDEN. But before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed. If you like skincare content from a dermatologist, hit the bell notification. It lets you know when my videos go live. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know at this point that UV rays from the sun, they lead to skin cancer and premature skin aging. Part of the way in which they do this is by causing DNA damage to the cells in your skin, the keratinocytes. Now your body has some mechanisms in place to repair some of that DNA damage, but it's not 100% complete. So the idea here is that by applying DNA repair enzymes to the skin, that that could somehow kind of step in and clear up any additional DNA damage, not only from exposure to UV rays from the sun, but also from other environmental stressors like pollution, for example. The first patent for DNA repair enzymes was in 1991, and since then there have been a lot of different technologies in the realm of DNA repair enzymes and skincare products, and there are a ton of brands out there that utilize DNA repair enzymes. Now the goal of DNA repair enzymes and skincare products is to hasten the clearance of damaged DNA in your skin cells upon exposure to environmental stressors because once you have that DNA damage, it triggers a cascade of events that subsequently has additional consequences for the health of your skin, including suppressing the immune system. And the immune system is supposed to circulate around and help repair damage. But do DNA repair enzymes and skincare products actually work? I mean, there are a lot of cool ideas out there, but there's a lot of hurdles that have to be overcome in order for something to actually work in your skin because it is a barrier. Now, what are the different DNA enzymes out there in skincare products? First, you have photolyase, which is actually what is utilized in the ISDEN products. It comes from plankton. There's another trademark UV endonuclease that comes from bacteria. OGG1 roxosome, sounds like a rock band that comes from the mustard plant. And then there's something called T4 endonuclease. There's actually quite a body of literature showing that yes, in fact, these DNA repair enzymes can in fact repair DNA damage in human cells. And there's actual evidence that applying them to the skin, they do end up working to reduce the burden of DNA damage upon exposure to UV rays. How do they actually get into the skin? My understanding is that they utilize uh, encapsulation of the enzymes, in something called liposomes, which very are very similar to the outer membrane of your skin cells. And so the idea is that the liposome will fuse with this cell membrane and that little DNA repair enzyme will be taken up into the cell and somehow make its way down into the nucleus of the cell in order to repair the damaged DNA. Now while there is a body of research showing that applying DNA repair enzymes to the skin does result in objective improvement in the overall burden of DNA damage, you can begin to see how it does seem a little bit hmm, tongue in cheek. How do these, do these actually get in? Yes, this technology is one that plausibly would allow for delivery of DNA repair enzymes, but to what extent they're going to penetrate through that stratum corneum, the outer most part of the epidermis, traverse the epidermis to reach the skin cells, and what proportion of the enzyme actually makes its way into the cell? These are questions we really don't have good answers to. Regardless, there are papers out there showing quite nicely that UV irradiated human skin that's been treated with DNA repair enzymes has overall less DNA damage in comparison to human skin not treated with these DNA repair enzymes. There's also a nice study that looks at a sunscreen with a DNA repair enzyme versus a sunscreen without applied to human skin. And ultimately the sunscreen with DNA repair enzyme, otherwise known as photolyase in this case, had overall significantly less DNA damage after irradiation in comparison to just sunscreen alone. As we start getting into our wiser years, the burden of cumulative lifetime UV exposure starts to catch up with us and we start making a lot of skin cancers. One type of skin cancer that's pretty common and is the result of UV exposure is called squamous cell carcinoma. But there's a little pre-skin cancer form of that known as an actinic keratosis. And people make a lot of these and a certain proportion of them ultimately will end up going on to turn into squamous cell carcinoma. So we treat them early. But there was a nice study that looked at patients who make a lot of these actinic keratoses 
and it showed that topical application of a sunscreen with DNA repair enzymes in comparison to a sunscreen without did in fact reduce the overall burden of DNA damage that these individuals have and ultimately reduced the kind of field cancerization effect of having a lot of sun damage. I'm always talking about matrix metalloproteinases. These are enzymes in the skin that get activated when your skin is irradiated, when you go outside from UV rays. And those matrix metalloproteinases go to work chewing up your collagen. And that's what leads to sun-induced formation of wrinkles later on. Topical application of a DNA repair enzyme has actually been shown to reduce the activation of that and of those enzymes and ultimately that's going to bode well for the health of your collagen when dna repair enzymes are applied to the skin of people who have a lot of risk factors for skin cancer there is some some research showing a reduction in the number of pre skin cancers otherwise known as actinic keratoses as well as a reduction in the formation of basal cell carcinoma and lastly these are compounds as i mentioned at the beginning they come from plankton bacteria the mustard plant so are they safe? Are there any potential harms with applying these to the skin? To date, there are really no adverse effects that have been reported in these many different trials. None of the studies to date really report any concerning adverse events. Uh, we've got studies that go out to six months, nine months, and a year with no real adverse events reported. In one study, a patient reported burning around the eyes with application of DNA repair enzymes that inadvertently kind of got too close to the eye. So in summary, topical application of DNA repair enzymes, they've been around for a while. They're commonly found in skincare products. They have been shown to reduce the burden of DNA damage in UV irradiated skin, and many of the downstream consequences of DNA damage also appear to be improved with topical application of DNA repair enzymes. However, more research is needed to really address to what extent these actually are getting into the skin, what the ideal topical formulation is going to be, the vehicle, uh, are other ingredients in the formulation important? Do they negatively influence uptake? Do they positively influence uptake? These are questions we don't have the answers to, and we really don't have the answers to the questions. Is this going to be chemo preventative, meaning prevent skin cancers? Uh, and is this going to help slow down accumulation of changes that lead to premature photo aging? All that to say, they appear to be safe and um, worth considering in skincare products, and there are a lot of products out there that do in fact contain these. Do I go out of my way to incorporate these into my skincare routine? No. Uh, I think more research is needed to really say for sure, but I have used many products, namely sunscreens over the years that do have these DNA repair enzymes in, in them. Now, these sunscreens come from ISDEN, and I will say, a lot of the studies looking at sunscreens with DNA repair enzymes, many of them are funded by ISDN. Some of them are funded by ISDN and use ISDN sunscreens. So I wanted to throw that out there. Doesn't necessarily mean they're all biased, but these do appear in quite a few studies. ISDN has two mineral sunscreens. These are both zinc oxide sunscreens. That's gonna offer the protection against UVA and UVB rays. And they both have photolyase in them. That's the DNA repair enzyme, comes from plankton. There's Arifatana actinica and there's Arifatana ageless. <laughs> Arifatana ageless is actually tinted, which is interesting because tinted sunscreens, they, may protect against some of the damage that can actually happen to your skin upon exposure to high doses of blue light from the sun it can be harmful. So the non-tinted sunscreen, you would expect a cast. There is a cast, but it's actually pretty subtle. This is actually a pretty sheer white cast. It's not chalky and both of these I have to say really are nice in terms of application, consistency. They leave the skin moisturized, but they're not greasy. They're a great base for cosmetics, and they're not matte to the point where it accentuates fine lines, but they're also a great matte option. If you have oily skin, you're looking for a more matte mineral sunscreen, try these out. Really lightweight, fast absorbing. Now they do have alcohol denaturant in them, which some people are fearful of, some people find is too drying, but I have to tell you, 
try it out in sunscreens because it does allow for a more quick dry formula and it allows for evaporation of sweat so it helps reduce that feeling of getting overheated they both are water resistant up to 40 minutes so that's great if you live somewhere like i do that's really humid it just kind of helps it adhere to the skin and stay on in place a little bit better than a non-water resistant sunscreen although if you're going to be outdoors for a prolonged period of time you're going to want to reapply this every two hours so um, i mean that's the same with any sunscreen don't get too confident in the water resistance but i do find that it helps it hold up a little bit better if you're somewhere that's really humid and hot and sweaty. These allow for really good evaporation of sweat too. They're nice and lightweight. They don't feel cloying or occlusive. Now let's speak about the tint on the Ageless one. The tint is a bit on the orange side, I will say. It looks nice on the skin. It's not super orange like Oompa Loompa orange. Some tinted sunscreens can be that way. But if you look very carefully at your skin, especially close to the hairline where you may have a gap between application and your hairline, or you know, if you, if you look at the juncture between where you've applied it and where you haven't, you'll notice it's kind of a little bit more orange. Now you may like that this time of year if you're using like a lot of sunless tanner, you may find that it's a nice match. It's not really obvious though, I will say when you're wearing it. It's not like you put it on and people are like, whoa, you look like you put on a lot of weird sunless tanner. It's more obvious if you get really up close or like I said, if you're looking at the juncture between where, you've ha where you have it on the skin and where you don't. I don't get any pilling with these, which for me, I cannot stand. Now, both of these do have fragrance. The fragrance is not really overpowering. It doesn't linger, but y'all know my preference is to not have fragrance, especially in sunscreens. Some fragrance compounds, they can actually be more irritating in the presence of sun. And we'll never know if, you know, what kind of fragrance compounds are actually in this because they don't disclose that per se. Anyways, it does have fragrance, which is not my preference but the fragrance is not overpowering. It's kind of like a powder, like almost a powdery fresh scent that fades very quickly. It doesn't linger or anything. So while you wear it throughout the day, it's not like you've got a cloud of perfume over your head. It's actually pretty subtle. There are some differences between these two products in terms of the other ingredients, specifically the, um, the Ageless, the tinted sunscreen, it has a few other ingredients in it. It has um, peptide Q10, which is a trademark proprietary peptide that allegedly, uh, based on industry studies, stimulates your body's ability to make more Q10 in the skin. It does that by stimulating an enzyme that produces Q10. CoQ10 is an antioxidant in our skin that helps reduce the burden of oxidative stress upon exposure to UV rays. To what extent the peptide is as effective as topical application of actual CoQ10, I'm not sure. I've talked about CoQ10 in skincare products before, like for example, that Eucerin moisturizer I really like, um, but I don't honestly know how the peptide stacks up to just putting Q10 on the skin. You're not, there, that kind of study doesn't exist to my knowledge, comparing the peptide to the actual antioxidant in terms of penetration and efficacy and reducing oxidative stress. It's popping up in more and more skincare products these days, but yeah, I've noticed that brands actually can be a little uh, not as obvious in their marketing of this peptide. Uh, as a side note, like they'll say, our new serum with Q10. And as a consumer, you may think that you're getting a serum with CoQ10 in it, and they may use the word peptide, so you're thinking, oh, okay, I'm getting a serum with CoQ10, otherwise known as ubiquinone, and I'm getting some peptides in there. But if you read the ingredients, you're like, there's no ubiquinone in this. That's because the peptide is the peptide Q10, which is a peptide that theoretically stimulates your skin to make more Q10. Um, so not as well researched as just actual Q10 itself. Anyways, it has that, and in contrast, the non the the non tinted one does not. Now, the non tinted one is sixty dollars, and the tinted one is seventy dollars. That is a pretty steep price point for these. I will say, I'm happy that the bottle is pretty large, three point four ounces. That's pretty sizable. Most sunscreens, especially 
more expensive ones. They tend to be 1.2 ounce bottles. So 3.4 is generous. These are expensive though. Are they worth it? They're worth it in my mind if you really like the way that they look, feel, and it motivates you to continue wearing them consistently. That is the key with sun protection. But are they necessarily any better at protecting you from UV exposure and skin cancer in comparison to you know a more affordable option? I don't know, you know, we, we won't actually ever get those kind of studies. These have the advantage of that DNA repair enzyme that has been shown to afford better protection against DNA damage in comparison to sunscreen alone. So there's that benefit to these, but there are a lot of gaps in knowledge in terms of to what extent topical application of DNA repair enzymes is actually going to prevent accelerated photo aging of the skin and or skin cancers. So I wouldn't hang my hat on these enzymes, but if you want to incorporate them into your skincare routine, you want a sunscreen with them, these are very good. I wish they didn't have fragrance because that can be irritating, but otherwise the aesthetics of them, I think you will like. Um, the scent does not linger, but if you are allergic to fragrance, you know, I would not, these are not going to be an option for you. Let me know in the comments though, if you have tried these. Anyways, you guys, that is the review of these sunscreens. Now stay tuned because I am also trying out some other products that I bought from Isden that I've kind of been teasing you guys with. If you watch the blogs, especially like, oh, I'm trying out a product here behind the scenes and I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I'm gonna review it later. It's some products by Isden. So make sure you are subscribed and you have the bell notification on so when that video goes live, you can see a review of those products. Some of them have ingredients that I've talked about on here before, so stay tuned for that. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.